Why do electric bike motors have such a short lifespan? In this video, we'll have a deep dive into that question. Stay tuned and we'll start right after this. This question assumes that e-bike motors have a short lifespan. So we'll start by determining what exactly is the expected lifespan of an e-bike motor. For what it's worth, I can tell you about my limited experience. I had a Pedigo City commuter and its first motor melted down after 11,739 kilometers or 7,300 miles. But that may not be typical. I also had a cube with the Bosch motor, and the motor still ran well when I sold it with 11,279 kilometers on the odometer, or 7,000 miles, so we have no idea how much longer it might have lasted. My present e-bike, a Rad Rover, has only 5,800 kilometers on it. This says nothing about its expected lifetime. Anecdotal evidence like this is worthless, so I decided to consult online e-bike websites. E-biking today estimates 10,000 miles. Electric Bike Tricks makes a distinction between hub motors and mid-drive motors. They estimate that a hub motor should last 10 to 15,000 miles, whereas a mid-drive motor should last 15 to 20,000 miles. The reason for this is that a mid-drive motor benefits from the choice of gears that allow it to run at its optimal speed, which reduces wear and tear and overheating. Where the road forks, they estimate 3,000 to 15,000 miles. All of the above estimates are based on geared motors. This website brings up a very important point, and that is that the direct drive motors last much longer than the more popular geared motors, up to 50,000 miles. The reason for this is the simplicity of the direct drive motor. It has no gears, and it has only one moving part. If this subject of his interest to you, you might want to watch my video entitled All You Need to Know About E-Bike Gears and Drive Systems, linked in the description. From all this, we can deduce that the average e-bike motor lasts somewhere between 10,000 and 15,000 miles. Good. But how does 10 to 15,000 miles compare to the lifespan of a car engine? That is, how many miles a car can travel before the motor needs a major overhaul or replacement? From my own experience, a car can last 300,000 kilometers or more, but that may be because of my bias for having owned only Toyotas for the last 40 years. In miles, that would be 186,000 miles. My 1984 Toyota Cressida lasted 386,000 kilometers or 240,000 miles before I sold it to a young guy who wanted it for parts, but the motor still ran like a top. But let's find a less subjective source. For that, I consulted an artificial intelligence app called ChatGPT. The question I asked was, how many miles does the engine of a North American car last before needing a major overhaul or replacement? ChatGPT gave me a pretty elaborate answer, but the gist of it is that a car engine would last 150,000 to 300,000 miles, which is 10 to 30 times more than an electric bike, confirming that electric bike motors have a very short lifespan. Now the question that comes to mind is why? To answer that question, we need a hypothesis that we can validate. My hypothesis is that these small motors work much harder than automobile motors. If we can show that e-bike motors haul much more gross weight than cars do in proportion to their size, that would validate the hypothesis. To that objective, we'll look at gross weight relative to power for e-bikes and cars. Gross weight is the vehicle weight plus the weight of its payload. 
For the weight of a knee bike, I'm going by my personal observations, but you could use a different number if you wish. E-bikes vary in weight from a low of 35 pounds to a high of 90 pounds. For this purpose, I'll work with an average of 62 pounds. For the average weight of a car, I decided to use my own observation again. In the Gatineau, Ottawa area, everybody and his uncle drives an SUV. So for the sake of argument, I selected the Toyota internal combustion engine RAV4 with a full tank of gas. That's 3,490 pounds plus 91 pounds of gas. A lot of people on my street drive a pickup truck instead of a car, so we could use a higher weight if we want to count the average of all vehicles that are used when an e-bike could do just as well. An e-bike, with very few exceptions, carries one person. It always has one whole person. It never has less than one person. Whereas a car is capable of five people, on average, it carries only one and a half people. If the average person weighs 165 pounds, then the e-bike has a payload of 165 pounds, and a car has a payload 1.5 times greater, or 248 pounds. Now we're ready to calculate the gross weight of both types of vehicles. For the e-bike, we add 62 pounds for the bicycle plus 165 pounds for the human payload for a gross weight of 227 pounds. For the SUV, we add 3,581 plus 248 pounds of payload and we get a gross weight of 3,829 pounds. Now we'll look at the size of engine each type of vehicle has in horsepower. The power of an e-bike is measured in watts, so to compare to cars we need to convert to horsepower. Simple, any unit conversion website will tell us that one horsepower is equivalent to 746 watts and change. In the USA, a road legal e-bike will have 750 watts of power, and in Canada, 500 watts, or one horsepower in the States and two-thirds of a horsepower in their northern neighbor. As for cars, there's no mandated horsepower limit, which is strange since our society is so fixated on safety. So we'll work with the power of the RAV4, 203 horsepower, which is pretty modest compared to other cars which can have as much as 400 horsepower or even more. Now that we know the payload weight and the vehicle weight of both e-bikes and SUVs, we can find the answer to our original question, why do electric bike motors have such a short lifespan? The answer lies in the gross weight per horsepower for each type of vehicle. For the SUV, divide gross weight, 3,829 by 203 horsepower, and you get 19 pounds of weight per horsepower. Do the same with an e-bike, 227 divided by 1 horsepower in the United States, gives you a total of 227 pounds of weight per horsepower, in other words, an e-bike's motor has to propel 12 times more weight than a car's motor. In Canada, it's much worse. 227 divided by 0.66 horsepower, or 344 pounds per horsepower. Let's play a what-if game. We'll overload both vehicles. We'll put one large man on an e-bike and five big men inside a Toyota RAV4. Then the weight per horsepower would be 473 pounds for the e-bike, but only 24 pounds for the SUV. This confirms my hypothesis that e-bike motors have a short lifespan because they work much harder than automobile motors. It's especially noteworthy to mention that the majority of e-bikes on the market have a geared motor with plastic gears because plastic gears are less noisy than metal ones. They're also lighter, cheaper to make, corrosion-free, and don't need much lubrication. 
Over time, they can wear out or they can strip if the bike is ridden aggressively. When my pedagogue motor failed, the bike shop told me that the gears had melted and that the manufacturer had agreed to replace the motor with a new one on warranty, as long as I paid for the labor. I wasn't aware of the motor having overheated, so I was puzzled as to how that could have happened. I searched online and couldn't find a single picture of melted plastic gears, so it's probably a rare occurrence. From my research, changing the gear set that holds the plastic gears is a pretty straightforward operation. A few models come with a geared motor equipped with metal gears, which last longer than plastic ones, but are noisier. I don't know how much longer. If you have experience with a motor that has metal gears, please let me know of your experience in the comments section. As mentioned earlier, Direct drive motors last much longer than geared ones, but for some reason or other, very few manufacturers make them. Do you know why? As for other possible causes of motor failure, the shaft could wear out if it's allowed to spin out due to the lack of a torque arm, or the electric cable that feeds the motor might get damaged and cut. Another possibility is that there could be a worn bearing, or it could be a catastrophic failure of the electric windings. In many cases, the cost of labor could be much higher than the cost of the parts. I wouldn't be surprised that many repairable motors are discarded because the cost of the labor would make it too expensive to repair them. One last point. Would it be a better comparison if we compared e-bikes to electric cars instead of internal combustion engine ones? Perhaps. I'd like to hear your comments on that point too. If you enjoyed this video, I hope it deserved a thumbs up on your part or a subscription if you're not yet subscribed to my channel. You might also consider sharing the video with a family member, a friend or an acquaintance. Best of all, you could help by buying a copy of my adventure book, Sailor Without a Boat, How I Sailed on Other People's Yachts and Lived to Tell About It. There's all kinds of information about the book on my website, www.robertberio.com. Thank you for watching and remember, never quit cycling!